G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here. What is Legoland Windsor UK like now that it's reopened for the first time in 2021 with COVID-19 measures in place? We'll check this out, what's new, what's different, what's open, what's not, the construction underway for the new rides coming later in 2021. We'll check out the restored Miniland, changes to the Lego retail at the park, and also give some hints and tips to get the most value out of your day. We'll cover this in the video and give our thoughts and first-hand experience as a family. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. We went to Legoland UK on Monday, April 12th, 2021, which was the first time it had been open since the easing of lockdown measures. Check the time code below to jump to the section of interest as we will cover what's open and isn't, what's new and different, the new Mythica 2021 rides currently under construction, the restored mini land and new features, changes to the Lego stores in the park and some hints and tips. This was a crazy drive to Legoland Windsor UK as it was actually snowing. Snow in London is rare enough, let alone in April, certainly made driving on the M25 a scary proposition, but luckily we got there in double the normal time it would take. Entrance to the park is the same as last year's post-COVID measures, trying to be socially distanced in the queue, although the car parking was however you wanted. The usual security bag checked, followed by some temperature guns. We got here at about 9.45am for a 10am opening and it was pretty much straight through. All the indoor rides are basically closed, so things like Haunted House obviously is going to be indoor and closed. And then even the uh, submarines, they don't even let you up there, it's all barricaded off. Because obviously also too, the hotels are still closed and probably won't be opening until May sometime. The outdoor rides are open, so ones such as the boats, cars. Okay, the Lego Ninjago ride is closed, the Ninjago shop is open, and then if you come further around, the Destiny's Bounty ride is open home. So this is new, so it'll be interesting to see what that opens up to be. Laser Raiders in the game zone is closed, but most of the other aerial nomads and the Thunderblaze and that are open. Pirate Shores is pretty busy with the playground, of course, being open. And then also to your uh, rocking ship there and the Pirate Falls as well. Knight's Kingdom has a few things open, like Merlin's Challenge, Dragon's Apprentice, and the Dragon. Spinning Spider is open and operational. Viking River Splash is operational. Now for a quick overview on what is new and different. As you come in, they've completely rejigged this area here with a new minifigure sculpture there. And they've chopped this up a little bit and changed it. There used to be like a little coffee shop here. A nice little character build that the kids can also sit in. Tree made out of lots of little Technopics up the top. As you come down, more bricks, all different kinds. And then inside here, the little miniature displays, both in this top and the sides. And all throughout the park and the rides, you've got these little spots for you to stand on when you're in queues to keep your two meters social distance. The old sort of build center is now the Rebuild the World Planet. It's not open at the moment. But they've finally got rid of the awning which used to have the Star Wars Millennium Falcon there. This has been refreshed, this used to be the banjo player. By the Fire Academy you've got this new water fountain coming out of the fire hydrant. All made out of Lego bricks which is new. Outside the 4D cinema you've got some new giraffes. A new train conductor on the station. A new bright and pink and purple type colour scheme on the panda there sitting in amongst the bamboo. And if we can't have a unicorn, the next best thing is a rainbow colour zebra. Seeing Lego land with a little bit of snow. Even Lego Mount Rushmore has a bit of snow on it. And then some other little subtle changes like the cars that used to go in and have them in a room showing them a video on how to sort of run it and drive it, whereas now they just let them go straight through because obviously they don't want parents and people all crowding in a confined space. And everyone over the age of 11 are wearing face masks. And in the Duplo Valley playground, They've closed down one of the Lego shops and then looks like it's going to be a coffee shop at some stage. Heart Lake Cafe sort of area all being given a fresh coat of paint. Looking nice and spiffy. So down in Heart Lake City in terms of the shows, they're trying to get you to leave gaps between groups which are being marked out. And sort of see marked all the way around. So you can do this whole social distancing thing. But unfortunately at the moment there's no shows running. The sweet shop's been revamped. 
There were a few people using the ride in reserve, but not too many. A lot of your takeaway type food places are open, but a lot of your restaurants are not. And the pizza and pasta place has become fully takeaway. All the chairs taken out. And there's some seating outside for the pizza and pasta you pick up. In terms of the ongoing construction and that, you've got that area down by the squid surfers. The restaurant's obviously being redone, it's still boarded off there. But you can see a couple of the new drop towers that are coming in there. Another new sort of arch into the general sort of area. Looks like you can sort of see just in through there. It says creature encounter. And then in the back, they've been building. Originally in the planning permission, it was outlined to be a Lego movie cinema. I think they're going to rechange that to something else now, given the uh, Lego second movie didn't do too well. It looks like it's going to be a massive theater of some description. So that should be coming very soon. So the new area just off us at Heart Lake looks like it's going to be that Mythica theming which are doing contests and things for that over the winter period. So in the new Mythica area, looks like you got a little children's playground here with a slide going down there. The restaurant's now the new Hungry Troll. Some of the new models look pretty cool. Looks like one of the new drop rides is going to be called Fire and Ice. Miniland, let's check out what new things have been added and revamped and refreshed. NASA's been refreshed with some new little men down there and a couple of boosters and space shuttle and so on. A few more rockets like the real Kennedy Space Center. Getting a lot of restoration work being taken out, so in around the docks and everything like that. That's all been restored there. Some of the ships in brighter, wider colours. Even in the back here, you got a couple of the cruise shines like the stellar one over there. The drag strip one, the buildings have been refreshed. Obviously the drag strip itself is not here, but that was looking pretty tired and did need some work. The European section has had a lot of restoration. A lot of these buildings were showing really signs of wear and everything like that, and some discoloration, whereas now they're all bright and crisp, and particularly a lot of the reds and the whites. New upgraded station in the London section. A couple of lost sheep have appeared. Big bang clock face looks like it's been given a bit of a refresh as well, nice and crisp and sparkly. Just off the main entrance where they used to have the little shop, that's now been gone, they've been consolidating it looks like a number of the shops throughout the park. So where you used to have also too the cafe there, that's been gone and they've completely refurbished this, what used to be a big shop. So now that is all just completely Lego retail. The interior retail space has been completely redone, given a nice fresh coat of paint and completely change the layout and organization. Interesting to see the built models on top and not behind glass. Usually obviously behind glass you have a little bit more ability to deal with theft and things easily. Of course all your Star Wars stuff all together. It looks interesting with the white and black boxes coming around to the checkouts. Seem to hopefully be in a more organized and consistent sort of way. Exit checkouts, new little models in there. And going around Technic section and all the way across and through the back. Interesting new little layout for the build your own minifigures. And then going across to a mosaic maker, which is starting to be in the main Leicester store place. Then you've got this pick a build sort of section, which is kind of like a pick a brick but slightly different. And apparently, later in the year, they're going to have your own customized minifig where you'll be able to print on the torsos, your own designs, and things. So that'll be interesting. And they're calling it the Personalization Studio. Probably the only retail store that has video at the full retail price of £18. And you have the magnifying glass to try to see the value of video. Down near Heart Lake, there's a new way to do some virtual shopping. Basically, scan the code, put the password, uh, enter in what you want to buy, and collect later on. Some quick hints and tips to get the most out of your day so you don't get blown away by the expense. Given that the hotels are closed, it's worthwhile getting here a little bit early so then you can go through and quickly do a couple of rides before any queues get really out of control. With the hotels being closed, there's no early access for others to get in, so if you are here first, you can be first. The lines do progressively get longer during the day. Also think at the moment if you're booking more than seven days in advance online you get further discounts. You usually definitely book at least the day before because if you book on the day online sometimes it usually is full price whereas the day before it can be 50% off the reasonable sort of price. If you pay for the pizza and pasta online there can be up to five pound discount as opposed to paying for it at the till. If you pay for your parking online that can also be a pound or so off without having to queue and deal with the hassle of a parking ticket machine.
At the end of the day, the queue to get into the shop is crazy. So either do it during the day, or we just came up from the Ninjago shop down where the Ninjago ride is, and there was nobody in there, so if Ninjago is your jam, get it from down there, don't queue up here. While they do have the reserve and ride, the old queue bot, it didn't feel too bad today. Like other times you've been here, and there'll be lots of people sort of being able to use them and jump in front of you, whereas it was only a few times people were doing that. So, you know, there's tired of it. If you do want to get on the rides, um, it's probably value for money, and that the queues aren't all that long. So is Legoland in 2021 worth a visit? I think it's going to be one of those things that really depends. When we originally booked our tickets, we didn't know that the indoor rides were all going to be closed. So being nice English weather, I think if you get a really rainy day or something like that, then standing out in the rain and all the open air rides is going to be a real issue and a bit tricky. On the flip side of that, it might mean that people don't actually come. We've had a, quite a good day, seen and been able to go on quite a number of rides. A lot of the ride lengths have only been about 30, 35 minutes at the worst of times. So and it hasn't felt bad like what it did last summer and there's links around the videos so we can see that. The only thing I would qualify by saying is that you are still paying full price for the tickets, which can be a little bit of a sting in the tail. However, if you are after a lot of the indoor rides, Ninjago, Haunted House, those sorts of things, then wait until probably May or late May when they all open up. Otherwise, it's done a few upgrades and refreshes over winter, but nothing that I'd say, you know, definitely come back and check out. If anything, maybe towards the end of May when they open up the Mythico, then that might be better value to come back then and see things. We let our Merlin annual passes expire last season as they have dramatically increased the price structure of the Merlin annual pass and it really isn't value for money anymore. Check out this review where we discuss this in depth. Link around the video. Numbers wise it hasn't felt too bad whether or not that's just because this is the first day and this morning it was snowing and people didn't want to end up coming along or just the sort of thing where they haven't quite figured it out that it's open and things like that so if the numbers get worse which they did last season then it might not be as enjoyable. Hopefully the park numbers can stay down to what they were today and unfortunately I have a funny feeling they'll go back up like they did last time and in terms of social distancing most people seem to sort of be following it and lots of masks with lots of people so it's good that way. Still there's some that weren't and while you had the two meter dots on the floor sometimes people wouldn't pay a huge amount of attention to that so it can be a little frustrating. Overall we had a good day, the kids really enjoyed themselves and we were able to get on lots of the different rides that are outdoors and also enjoy a bit of the sunshine. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. If you want to check out a full walk through the park in a couple of minutes, click the video here. Alternatively, if you want to see another video on how to save money at Legoland, check out this video. Alternatively, here's a walkthrough of Legoland Dubai. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.